Welcome back, Giants fans. So today we have the video of me answering the community page questions from you guys about the draft, of course, pertaining to the New York Giants. We have about 11, 12 questions here. The draft's in nine days. It's actually on my birthday this year, so hopefully for my birthday, I get myself Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau. That'd be great, but we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm going to answer the questions. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. If you forgot to ask a question and want to ask in the comments, I'll do my best to get back to you and answer those. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Leave a like always helps out. And let's get into it. First question from Kurt Schwarber, the man I call Kyle Schwarber. I actually took Kyle Schwarber in fantasy baseball, so the joke lives on. What are your thoughts on trading back up until the first round with our second round pick, possibly to get Tyler Lunderbaum? I've seen some people discuss this but I guess that cap space would be an issue trading up considering we're extremely tight with cap space but there are some good quality players that will likely go in the mid-20s keep up the great content and thanks for always answering the question no problem good sir now I don't hate the idea we've seen this with the Giants in the past most notably with DeAndre Baker and as much crap as I gave Dave Gettleman and rightfully so that was a smart move by him obviously he picked the wrong player with DeAndre Baker but I think trading up for a guy in the first round is usually worth it because you're going to get that extra fifth-year option. For those that don't know, players that are drafted in the first round are given a fifth-year option on their rookie contracts. Players that are taken in rounds two through seven, those are four-year contracts. You don't get a fifth-year option. So like that's why Will Hernandez is a free agent or was a free agent this year as compared to Saquon Barkley, who had his fifth-year option picked up this year. So you're basically buying yourself an extra year. That's why the Ravens trading up for Lamar Jackson, pick 32, last pick of the first round, that worked out so well for them, bought themselves an extra year. But for a guy like Tyler Linderbaum, I mean, I guess it could happen. It depends where he falls. If he falls past like 25 or something, you can start to consider it because the Giants do have themselves some extra draft picks. We know they have two third round picks this year. They have a lot of picks based on trading back last year and then being more of a rebuilding team. So I can see it. Even if it's a guy like Kyer Elum, the cornerback out of Florida, Zion Johnson, the guard out of uh, Boston College, I could see a scenario where the Giants do want to trade back up in the first round, but do you want to give up possibly an extra third round pick to do so? That's, that's the cost it would take. So you know, I think the Giants may be looking at this and saying, well, we have ourselves so many draft picks. We have so many holes in the roster. We want to keep as many picks as possible. I can see them going that route. But I do think if there's somebody they're very confident in that can, that they know is, or you can't say you know for sure, but that they feel very good about being a, a good NFL player, I don't mind it. Like getting a guy for an extra year and having that fifth year option, it's, it's usually worth it. So I don't hate the idea, but unfortunately, you probably have to give up one of those third round picks in order to do so. Next question from another familiar name, Ray Sosa. So let's say the Giants draft Thibodeau at five. I would like that. Is there a scenario where you could see them taking Linderbaum at seven, being that he is projected to be the best center over the last 10 years since Nick Mangold? Or do you think Shane prioritizes positional value so much that he takes cross there if Neil and Iquanu aren't there at seven. Love the videos, Mike. Keep them coming. Thank you, Ray. So yeah, as much as we know Linderbaum is a quote-unquote safe prospect, I would find it a bit hard to believe that Joe Shane takes a center at number seven overall. I know that as Giants fans, we want the entire offensive line fixed. We want that very badly. But in this scenario where you're taking an edge guy at five, which I think is a good pick, by the way, I'm fine with going edge at number five. Um, I, I, I just think they look at the right tackle spot and realize we need that because right now on the roster, it's Matt Pertz, and then you have guys like Corey Cunningham, but at least at center, you have some options. You have John Feliciano, who right now is going to be the starting center unless Nick Gates miraculously comes back for week one. I just mentioned Nick Gates. That's number two. And you also have Max Garcia, who they signed from the Cardinals, who can play some center as well. So you have two, maybe three options there at center already. So it's not as scarce as the right tackle position. And based on positional value, we know tackles get paid way more than interior offensive linemen. And a guy like Joe Shane that values that type of stuff, he's going to look at the right tackle on a rookie contract and how valuable that is to his football team, especially a team that has a lot of cap issues like the New York Giants. So 
I wouldn't hate Linderbaum at seven because I do think he's a very good bet to be a top 10 center in the NFL sooner than later. But at the same time, the Giants have such need at right tackle. Right tackles get paid a lot of money. You gain such an advantage by having them on their rookie contract. So I don't see Joe Shane making that pick at seven when it's Linderbaum. Next question from Mark Anthony. If the Giants trade down, which teams do you think are most likely to do it? And what could be the return investment? So I have three teams in mind here that could be looking to trade up. Of course, most times it's for a quarterback. I don't know exactly which player could fall that they would really want to trade up for that the Giants wouldn't want. So in most cases, it's going to be a quarterback, and this is not the best quarterback class, but there are a few teams out there that need a quarterback. Um, I'm looking at the Seattle Seahawks. I'm looking at the New Orleans Saints and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, the Seahawks have their situation with Russell Wilson gone. It's Drew Locke now, and I think Drew Locke has some raw talent, but you can't trust that guy to be your quarterback for a whole 17-game season. The Saints brought back Jameis Winston on a two-year deal, but is he really the future answer there? I'm not so sure. And of course, Pittsburgh, you have Mitch Trubisky now. You still have Mason Rudolph. Of course, they ran into the very tragic situation with Dwayne Haskins. Could they look to another quarterback it could happen but once again do these teams love these quarterbacks in this class I'm not so sure about that now let's go team by team and what the Giants could possibly get in return here so if you're Seattle why does it make sense to jump up from nine to five well the reason would be because the Carolina Panthers who also need a quarterback unless Sam Darnold's going to be the future I kind of doubt that at this point but the Carolina Panthers are the sixth overall pick in this draft. The Giants, of course, have five and seven. So if you're Seattle, you could look to jump Carolina, who is a quarterback needy team, and possibly be the team to take the first quarterback off the board. So that's why it makes sense for Seattle to jump over the Carolina Panthers here. Now, Seattle has pick number nine in the draft. Of course, the Giants would want that in return. And they also have picks number 40 and 41 in round two. So if you're the Giants, you can look at a simple trade swap of you give up the five pick, you get the nine pick in return and get pick number 40 in return. So is nine and 40 better than just pick number five? You can make the argument. Now, if I'm the Giants, I'm probably asking for another mid-round pick. I would say probably give me one of those fifth round picks, 145 or 153. But there is, you know, a possibility that a deal could happen there. Now, for the Saints, it's interesting because they made that trade with the Eagles. I made a reaction to that trade. I thought the Eagles won that trade by a lot, honestly, based on the draft compensation. We'll see what those picks turn into. But now the Saints have picks number 16 and 19. So if you're the Giants, could you trade pick number seven, let's say, for picks 16 and 19 or pick number five for picks uh, 16 and 19? You could say yes to that, but like I think you have a better chance of getting a great player at number five or number seven as compared to 16 or 19, of course. I don't know if I want to make that move. Like if this was a if this was a draft that had more depth like the previous two draft classes, I would say, you know, I would be more on board for that. But for me to give up a top five, even top seven pick to get two picks in the middle of the first round, I'm not so sure about that. But that's an option. 16 and 19 for five or seven. Then you have the Pittsburgh Steelers who have picked number 20 in the draft. Pick number 52, pick number 84, 138. You're looking at a situation where, let's say, Pittsburgh wants to trade up to number five or seven overall. The Giants would ask for pick number 20, probably their second round pick, number 52, and maybe a first for next year, something like that. So you would get a first for this year, a second for this year, and then a first for next year, something along those lines. To me, the most attractive team to trade with right now is Seattle because of the trade they pulled off with the Broncos and getting their picks. Getting pick number nine and only having to drop four spots from five to nine, that's not so terrible. And plus, you can get an extra second round pick. As I said, you can get another mid round pick. So I do like that Seattle Seahawks return. Do I think the Giants actually trade back? I think I'd be a bit surprised based on this quarterback class. If it was like last year's quarterback class where like five guys went in the top 15 or four guys, whatever it was, um, then yeah, I can definitely see that happening. But I just don't know if these teams really love this quarterback class. So we'll see. Of course, it's possible, but it's just not as likely as it would be in other years because of the quarterback class not being as great as it has been in the past couple years. Next question from Dave Campbell. Will you be upset if the Giants go cornerback at five or seven instead of edge? 
We've passed on stud edge guys for as long as I can remember. And this year is a chance to get it right. I'm reserving my opinions on this front office until after the draft. I'm with you there on that last part. Um, no, I would not be mad. I, I think when you look at edge rushers and cornerbacks in today's NFL, they're pretty equal in terms of like how important they are. Of course, going back from like, you know, 2007, 2011, the Super Bowl runs, I think back then you would look at edge rushers and pass rushers as, as way more valuable, but I think now when it's such a pass heavy league and especially with Don Martindale, the way he wants to run this defense, like cornerbacks are so important for this uh, Giants team right now and just in the NFL in general. We saw how much money Denzel Ward just got from the uh, Cleveland Browns and he's had a problem staying on the football field. Very good player, but he's still got a ton of money himself. So if the Giants do love themselves, uh, Ahmad Sauce Gardner or love themselves, Derek Stingley, who I happen to like I would not hate it I really wouldn't I, I think this defense needs so much right now and you're looking at James Bradbury as a guy who's going to be here for one more year maximum he might he might not even be on the roster when the 2022 season starts so you're looking at this cornerback room can Aaron Robinson step up and stay healthy that's a what if I do like him but you never know can a guy like Adoree Jackson stay healthy? That's a big what if. Um, so looking at the cornerback depth, I mean, I like Darnay Holmes in the slot, but he got hurt last year too. So there are some concerns here. So the Giants do need themselves a stud cornerback one, especially if James Bradbury's traded. And I, I do like Ahmad Gardner. I do like Derek Stingley. I, I like them both as prospects. So if the Giants took one of those guys and, you know, happened to not get an edge guy at five or seven, I can live with it. If we left the first round with Evan Neal and either Derek Stingley and Ahmad Gardner, then I can absolutely live with that. Like, I'm fine with that as uh, the Giants picks at five and seven. So, no, I mean, I, would I have concerns about our edge rushing group? Absolutely. I think Aziz Ojolari right now at this point in his career should not be a number one guy. He should be a number two guy. And you're looking at the rotational guys, of course, behind him, and we don't really have an alpha pass rusher. We still need that. So I would be concerned about it, but at the same time, I don't think taking a cornerback over an edge rusher is going to make me mad, quote unquote. Next from Frank, do you think we draft right tackle, edge rusher, and linebacker with our first three picks since that's our needs, or what do you think happens? I think it's very possible. I, I can definitely see a scenario where the Giants go right tackle at five, Charles Cross at five, then we'll say they go... Kayvon Thibodeau at seven if he falls there and then they go like Leo Chanel or Brian Asamoah in the second round I can absolutely see a scenario where that happens um is it a guarantee no I, I think the Giants are going to have more of like this best player available type approach and I think they will because when you look at the Giants roster there are so many needs there are some needs that are more glaring than others like we don't look at wide receiver as a major need we're not going to look at free safety as a major need things like that but for the most part the Giants have needs just about everywhere so no, I don't see them forcing picks based on position. You didn't list cornerback here. I can absolutely see a scenario where they fall in love with Sauce Gardner or Derek Stingley and go in that direction as well. So do I think it's likely that this could happen? Sure, I can definitely see it happening. But I do think that Joe Shane and the Giants will have more of like this best player available type approach while of course having positional value influence their decisions. Next question from Ricky. Is there a player you don't want to see the Giants draft with five or seven? All right, so let me go look. I mean, it's going to be tough for them to screw this up. Once again, I said that last video. I think Jordan Davis, the defensive tackle, I mean, that would annoy me based on positional value. We already have Dexter Lawrence. Like, what the hell is the point? Seems like a redundant pick, and it's just not very necessary. So Jordan Davis is one. I wasn't the big, like, George Karloff, this guy. I can see a scenario where he's fine, but I, I just think there's better... Like you might as well take a chance on Trayvon Walker. You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna take a shot on George Karloff, just just take Trayvon Walker. You know what I mean? Like I just that would kind of bother me. I don't really see a point in going Karloff this at five or seven. I said, you know, in my previous video, I just didn't see all the hype around Kyle Hamilton. Would I hate Kyle Hamilton at seven? No, but I just I think there are better players. I, I just I don't know if I can really get behind it completely. I guess having him play next to Xavier McKinney for the next decade, hopefully, it's not the worst thing in the world. But still, I, I just don't really see what other people are seeing when it comes to Kyle Hamilton. So I, I guess at five or seven, I would have my concerns. But um, overall, like I wouldn't hate it. I, I think Jordan Davis is the one just based on the position he plays and already having Dexter Lawrence like that just wouldn't make sense to me. But 
The other ones, it's like, you know, Karloff, this okay. I, I could probably learn to like it. Kyle Hamilton, I could learn to like, but I think Jordan Davis is probably the one where it'd be like, what the hell are we doing? So next we have Frank again. I'll answer part of his question because we kind of touched on the other stuff, but who do I think we draft at five or seven, basically, I will go with. So I think right now, if I had to guess on April 19th, who did the Giants draft? And once again, I'm going to make a mock draft before the draft. I'm probably going to look to do that sometime around this weekend, maybe Monday to, well, the draft's on Thursday, so I'll probably try to get it out by Monday the latest. But anyway, so who do I think the Giants draft? I think they come away with either one of Evan Neal or Charles Cross. I think Aquanu's going either two or three. I don't think he's going to fall. So I think it's either Cross or Neal. And then at seven, they go Ahmad Garner. That's my prediction right now. I mean, I, I could be wrong, of course, but just based on my gut and like what I've just been hearing and stuff on Twitter and what people are saying, I, I just think it's going to be one of those two tackles and Ahmad Garner is my prediction right now for five and seven. So last question here from Jack. It's a longer one. So if the Giants take Kayvon Thibodeau at five and then Charles Cross is the only offensive tackle left on the board and both Sauce Gardner and Kyle Hamilton are on the board at seven. Do you end the first round without taking any offensive linemen if the board ends up going this direction, or do you possibly reach for cross due to the desperate need on the offensive line? Or do you trade back and maybe take Linderbaum and collect more draft capital for next year? And the last part's about trading back up in the first round. We talked about that earlier. So anyway, to answer this question, sorry, let's say Kayvon Thibodeau's picked at five. I'm, I'm happy as hell. I'm excited. And now we're at seven. Charles Cross is on the board, then you have Kyle Hamilton on the board, and Ahmad Gardner. Now, I think, you know, I don't think Kyle Hamilton's necessary at that point. I mean, maybe the Giants are in love with him, I have no idea. But at that point, you're between Sauce Gardner and Charles Cross. I feel better about Gardner as a prospect and, and working out in the NFL. I have my concerns with Charles Cross. But I think the Giants may be in such a need for right tackle that they ultimately go with Charles Cross. And there was reports coming out recently, not recently, maybe a couple weeks ago, that the Giants are big fans of Charles Cross. So if that's the case, I definitely could see it happening. I just don't really see a scenario. I mean, it could happen, of course, but I would find it hard to believe that the Giants don't leave the first round without a right tackle, specifically five or seven. If the Gi if it gets to pick number eight and the Giants don't trade back and they leave the first round without a right tackle, I'd be surprised. I, I just think the Giants have so many concerns right now with that spot. You have Evan Neal, you're going to have Equan, you're going to have Charles Cross, and you're probably going to have a pick at one of two of those guys. I, as, as I said, I don't think Aquanu makes it to the Giants, but if you're sitting there at five with uh, Charles Cross and Evan Neal sitting there, I, I think you're going to take one of them. I just don't really see a scenario where the Giants leave at five or seven without a right tackle. But I guess crazier things have happened. I guess it's possible that it could be Kayvon and, and Sauce Gardner. I guess that wouldn't be all that surprising either. But I just think right tackle is such a need for this team. I, I talked about the depth at that position before. They have that Matt Gano guy that they got from the Falcons. Of course, Matt Parrott coming off the ACL. When the hell is he going to be ready? I don't know. And then you have like Corey Cunningham. So you have so many um, questions about that right tackle spot. And we know Daniel Jones needs an offensive line. We, we've seen how it's gone without an offensive line the past couple of years. I mean... You know, the Giants need somebody at right tackle. So I, I just, I'd find it hard to believe. So for this last part, I mean, if you're going to trade back and take Linderbaum, if you get like an awesome offer from the Pittsburgh Steelers, let's say the Steelers trade from 20 up to number seven, and the Steelers give us like number 20 and like, you know, their second round pick, a first next year, maybe even more, um, then yeah, I can see a scenario where that happens and the Giants take Linderbaum at number 20. But once again, they're going to leave without a right tackle. So that's the concerning part. So you know, as I said earlier, I'd be a bit surprised if a team jumps up big time for a quarterback. I can see the Seahawks doing it because you're only jumping up four picks. I don't know if I see the Pittsburgh Steelers jumping from 20 to 7 or 20 to 5 to get a quarterback in this class. I don't know if it's worth it, so I'd be a bit surprised by that. Anyway, that's going to do it for the video. As I said, mock draft for the Giants is coming out soon. I'm going to get working on that. I've pretty much watched everybody that I need to at this point. So we're going to do a five-round mock draft for the Giants of who I think they're going to take. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you guys next time.